one, Luke and Merce Prime here. So, it is time for the next episode of Movie That Didn't Need a Sequel. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering this an example of an action thriller film. And this is one of my favourite films, which involves firefighters. And it's also one of my favourite films by the director, Ron Howard. And this film, which in my opinion did not need a sequel and was better being on its own as a standalone film, is none other than 1991's Backdraft. So, you guys are going to be asking me, of course, what are my thoughts on this film? Well, I saw this film, I think it was a couple of years ago now, on Netflix, because I thought, you know, why not give it a watch while I was there? So, I watched it, and I got to say that I absolutely loved this film. I think it was definitely really great, and, and definitely lots of fun to watch. We get performances from people such as Kurt Russell, William Baldwin, Scott Glenn, Donald Sutherland, Robert De Niro, just to name a few. Definitely, in my opinion, a great film, and was definitely lots of fun to watch. So, when it comes, of course, to, to why I personally think the film did not need sequels then, so, the film has an ending which is both heartbreaking and sort of like a good note for a character of Brian, who is William Baldwin's character, because, unfortunately, Kurt Russell's character Stephen does end up dying from his injuries in the fire, sadly, but he makes Brian promise not to reveal the character of Cor, also which is, is John Adcock's to be the perpetrator of the fires, because Adcox, of course, admitted to be responsible for them because he, because the character called Swayze was benefiting from firefighters' deaths and, and he closed down firehouses because he wanted to kill the associates to stop Swayze from doing this. So, so, so Brian promises to keep it secret and and the film, of course, ends with him continuing on as, as a firefighter, carrying on his family's firefighting tradition despite the loss of his father and brother. So, in their memory, he's still continuing to be a firefighter and... I think with that ending, they did a very good job executing it, and to me, that is where the franchise ended as one movie alone. And that's why I like to pretend, because the film to me is an absolute masterpiece, and definitely, in my opinion, one of Ron Howard's best films, I mean, because my favourite film he's, he's directed is Willow, and this one's probably, probably my second favourite I've seen of his films so far, that is. However, unfortunately, despite this great ending, which is both heartbreaking and well-executed, in my opinion, we sadly got a sequel... And this was once again an example of a really late sequel which was not needed whatsoever because it was released in 2019. So that tells you all you need to know about how late it was because it took them like about 28 years, I think it was, to actually do a sequel that wasn't even needed in the first place. And what's also worse is it was released direct to video as well, not in theatres like how, of course, the amazing first film was. And of course, this was none other than 2019's Backdraft 2. Oh my god. So, when I heard they did a sequel to the first film, I was not happy about that. I was like, why? There was no need for a sequel to begin with, there was no setup for any at all. It just end, it just ended on on a note where the character Brian continues to be a firefighter to honor his family. So that made me really angry. We did a sequel to it, and Ron Howard didn't even return to direct it. Instead, it was directed by someone called uh, Gonzalo Lopez as Gallego, and Ron Howard didn't return to direct it. So I could tell by him not returning it was going to suck. So recently, I decided to give a film a watch just to see how bad it was, and guess what? It was bad. In my opinion, it was absolutely terrible. Compared to the first film, which I give a full ball, 10 out of 10, and I really love, this one, in my opinion, absolutely sucked. So, this sequel features the character Sean McCaffrey, who's actually the son of Kurt Russell's character, Stephen. And when it comes, of course, to what I think of, of the character, he was nowhere near, in my opinion, as, as entertaining for me as Kurt Russell's character, Stephen, in my opinion. Or even as good, in my opinion, as William Baldwin's Brian, either, in my opinion, too. Such a weak character, in my opinion. And, I mean, I've got nothing against, against the actor who plays in Joe Anderson, but if he wanted to cast an actor who more resembles Kurt Russell, then I'd have recommended they cast Kurt Russell's son, Wyatt, to play his character instead. I thought it probably made a lot more sense and more authenticity, really, but no. They didn't do what did they? And I personally feel that, 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 of course, this character was just so bland and lifeless and just a character I just didn't care about compared to Stephen, in my opinion. And speaking of Brian, there's only two actors from, from the first one who actually have returned to prize their roles. And that's William Baldwin as Brian and also Don Donald Sutherland as Ronald Bartell. Those are the only ones who come back. And they were, in my opinion, the only redeeming quality of this trash. They at least had watchable scenes, thankfully. 
because they still gave their best performances despite being in an awful film in my opinion but my problem with them is that I, I didn't like what Donald Sutherland was hardly in the film I hated that because he's a great actor it's always a pleasure to have him on screen and, and I hate how this film he was barely in it which really sucked and when it comes to, to Brian while his scenes were still a good pleasure to watch because William Baldwin had still got it in the role I personally really hated how this film does a horrible thing to Brian where it kills him off in a, in a very pathetic way where a bomb goes off. Like, that made me so angry. Like, this character who survived fires in the first film dies in a bomb. I'll just get stuffed. That's just so stupid in my opinion. So I can't believe he did that to Brian because I really liked him in the first film. I mean, to kill him off like that. Oh my god. And... It's also as well how, how the film just just really made the first film completely and utterly pointless as well, too, which is why I think it sucked. Like, no reason to exist whatsoever. And also as well, this film suffers from, from the same problems that other direct video films have, which I've seen. Like, for example, compared to the first film's brilliant effects for its time with, with fires, in this film, I could easily tell the fire was fake. You could easily tell that the fire was not real, and that's really bad in my opinion. Like, it's not supposed to look fake. It's not supposed to, but in this film, you could easily tell it was fake, and it looked horrible to see. Like, goodness me, I don't know what happened at all. It was just direct-to-video garbage. Like, all my problems with direct-to-video films were summed up in this film because it was garbage, in my opinion. And despite also being 101 minutes, the film's pacing, in my opinion, was, was very slow and just really, really and just just not fast enough to be watchable, in my opinion, too. Like, I just, I just found it so unwatchable for that reason. Like, I just couldn't bear it. And the film also sort of ends with a dumb sequel based setup where it shows, of course, Sean about to, of course, investigate another fire. But thankfully, since this film, I've not done a third film, and thank God for that, because I have no doubt in my mind it would probably be a lot worse than this film. Because, like I said, guys, the only thing I liked about this sequel was, was Return of William Baldwin and Donald Sutherland, and that was it. Other than that, the film absolutely sucks, in my opinion. It just ruins the, the great first film from Ron Howard, in my opinion. Because. Compared to the first one that I love, this for me was direct to video trash. And if I was to give it a score out of 10, I'd probably give it a very bad score, 2 out of 10. Only because of those two actors who came back. Other than that, the film was trash in my opinion. Like, even, like, visually and story-wise, it just felt so different to the first one in my opinion. Different in a really bad way. Like, nowhere near as impactful in my opinion either as the first one, I must say. Like, what happened? Like, this was an absolute joke in my opinion. So, when it comes to what's our own in the future, guys... I'll see if one day I can get the first film on Blu-ray, hopefully. And to me, it's the only film. There is no way I'm ever going to buy a sequel. No chance. If I end up buying, like, a two-pack of both films, say, I can't buy the first one, I'll be like, so be it. But it means if I ever consider reviewing these films, I can do a try stop for a sequel, at least. So there's that, too, thankfully. But one, one, one positive to come out of getting both films, even if I don't want to, is like, I can try stop. But hopefully one day I'll just have the first one on its own, and that's it. So long story short, guys, Backdraft to me is only one movie. Just one. So, this me coming white, in my opinion, Backdraft for 991 is definitely a big example. I can say of a thriller film did not need a sequel. So, you know the drill, guys. Be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to leave in the comments what you guys think of Backdraft. If you've seen it, do you think it needed a sequel? Or the comments below what you think. Also, be sure to join the team. Find my presence, grab who's coming in the future. And I'll see you all later.